Hello everyone. Um, this is continuation of uh, the other video which I did about uh, macro cells and small cells. Um, I had this topic in mind for quite a while because generally what happens is whenever anybody talks about head nets, they only talk uh, head nets in the limited sense. So my theory is that there are two different definitions of head nets and they are both correct. Uh, but uh, most people do not actually look at uh, one or the other definition. So this is what I'm going to try and explain in this video, the two different definitions of head nets. So let's recap uh, the mobile towers. Uh, so in theory, generally in, in books and things like that, you would see that uh, the, the mobile tower or uh, the antenna site is at the center of a cell. Uh, so it is, uh, it has an omnidirectional antenna and the cell is uh, circular uh, in shape. And when there are a lot of these cells, uh, you can draw the edges that uh, they are hexagonal uh, in shape. So this is where uh, the word cellular comes for, from uh, because they look like cells. In practice, uh, you have uh, an antenna site which is generally like multi sectors so generally three sectors so the way I've shown it is uh, like you have uh, this uh, an antenna site and there are three different cells uh, or sectors of cell depending on uh, where you are from uh, so there are three cells or three sectors of a cell they are both correct right and uh, you have a multiple of these sites so there are all these cells uh, which are actually uh, like you know adjacent to each other and this is how again you can see the cellular structure so if I'm showing uh, one of these sites uh, I'll just show like three cells uh, in like this right so what happened during old days when you had 2g and earlier 3g earlier phase of 3g uh, you had all these sites which were transmitting 2G and 3G and all these cells were generally the same in size uh, and what they formed was a homogeneous network. As the number of technologies increased and like you know for each technology operators have multiple frequencies right so for uh, let's say even when it's 3G it's 2100 megahertz but you have 5 megahertz bandwidth so an operator can have multiple of this 5 megahertz bandwidth so instead of having just this uh, one layer uh, operator started having multiple layers uh, like uh, the ones I am showing here and these are referred to as hierarchical cell structures HCS so if you look at uh, some of the specifications uh, so there is uh, there is uh, information about uh, hierarchical cell structures. So it's in uh, some messages and system information. But then later on, uh, so later on in 3G, uh, femtocells were introduced. And even before femtocells got introduced, there was this concept of a pico cell and a micro cell. Of course, some of these definitions are about uh, uh, macro cells and uh, I mentioned meadow cell here. So these came later, but there were a lot of different types of small cells they, that were introduced, right? And they were each designed for a different scenario. Like some of them were indoors, some of them were outdoors, some of them were just residential, some of them were enterprise. So now if I start adding uh, these small cells uh, to this uh, definition, of uh, uh, homogeneous networks, it starts becoming head nets. So like you have uh, these uh, different pico cells, of course they don't have to be a continuous layer, right? And here I have shown some continuous cells, but they don't have to be continuous, right? So you have pico cells, you have micro cells, and you have femto cells, and femto cells uh, may overlap each other as, uh, as well. So you have all these different kind of uh, macro cells and small cells that come together and they form the heterogeneous network and this is the first definition of a heterogeneous network 
So some years back, I came across this presentation from Cisco, uh, which actually explains the same concept, which I just explained about head nets in a different way. And I really like the way uh, uh, the presenter has explained it. So I'm just showing these slides here. So you can see there is a 2G, 3G, 4G network, Wi-Fi network. <clears throat> and this is a simple uh, single operator. When you mix in multiple operators, uh, this uh, becomes a bit more complex. Then each operator can have multiple vendors, you know, just in theory, some operators do and some don't. But if you have multiple of these uh, uh, vendors, uh, so then you can have more uh, subdivision uh, within your 2G, 3G, 4G and Wi-Fi networks. And now if you mix the small cells uh, in, in this particular mix, you can see like uh, how complex this network has become. So this is uh, what I mentioned as the first definition of a heterogeneous network. This is just another way of showing the head net. And uh, as I mentioned here, I actually refer to this as hierarchically structured network right because uh, they contains hierarchical cell structures so i prefer this term than the term head net so now let's look at the other definition of head nets the lt concept of head net so i have my macro cell here uh, right and these frequencies uh, the frequencies which we use they are uh, well actually the spectrum is really expensive so when an operator has invested in a spectrum they want to make full use of it so let's say the operator decides to deploy a small cell using the same spectrum so what will happen here so if there is a ue here that will work fine if there is a ue here uh, that will work fine too but if there is a ue here it will not work well uh, well it wouldn't receive any signal and that's because of a simple reason. Because there would be interference, right? So the interference will make sure that the UE does not see a macro cell or the small cell. Now what if I change the scenario a little bit and put the small cell inside a, a building? So it could be a shopping mall or it could be some kind of a, like an enterprise. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a building. And I put the small cell in there. Now, if I have a UE uh, somewhere in the center of this building, uh, this will be able to look, uh, listen to the small cell. So this will work fine. The real challenge here comes when UE is at the end of this. So somewhere near a window or near a door, these UEs, these uh, they will receive some signal from the small cell. They will also receive the signal from the macro cell. Now, because both of them are receiving the signal on the same uh, the same frequency, uh, right? There is a chance where they cannot listen uh, really well to either the small cell or the macro cell. So, to solve this problem, there has to be some kind of a mechanism which can actually manage interference in this particular scenario. So here, the macro cell is called the aggressor cell and uh, the small cell is called the victim cell. So the way to solve this kind of a, uh, uh, this kind of a problem, which I just showed, there is uh, something called EICIC, Enhanced ICIC. Now the Enhanced ICIC, I'm not going to go a uh, lot in depth in this particular tutorial because this is uh, aimed at beginners. So there are two types of EICIC solutions one for the non-carrier based, the ones which I just showed, right? So here there is a Pico cell, which is a victim and the macro cell is the aggressor. So to solve this uh, problem of aggression, what happens is there are something called almost blank subframes. Uh, and this almost blank subframes, what it does is the macro cell, the aggressor cell will switch off transmission in certain uh, subframes. When these uh, transmissions are switched off in certain subframes, the victim cell will actually schedule the UEs to receive the control information during these slots. 
that way the ues can actually receive the control information now during receive uh, reception of uh, the data they might encounter some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of a uh, uh, issue but at least they can receive the control information uh, without any problem you know so there is interference during the data transmission but at least the control information is clear so this is one approach for eicic there is another approach uh, which is uh, for uh, carrier based uh, which is called the carrier based eicic and what it does what happens in this one is uh, something known as the cross carrier scheduling so in case of a macro uh, one particular uh, layer will send the control information right in case of the small cell the another layer will send control information this way uh, at least the control information can reach the ue safely so only the data will encounter some kind of an interference and this approach is supposed to work well uh, in theory for carrier aggregated uh, cells there were further enhancements uh, so the eicic which you just saw was introduced in uh, release 10 now uh, further on in release 11 uh, further eicic feicic was introduced for non carrier aggregation based uh, deployment in which which is the same as the earlier case but in this what happens is some advanced transmitters are used right and at the same time uh, when the almost blank subframes happen there is also a power reduction because uh, you don't really want to so suppose if there is a ue which is far away from the small cell you don't want uh, to basically stop them receiving uh, signals during this almost blank subframes right it's not a efficient use of resources so what happens is only power is reduced uh, when almost blank subframes are, uh, are transmitted so this way the whole cell can actually be a bit more efficient now as i mentioned it's like a, this is just a beginner's tutorial i didn't really want to go too much into detail so here are some of the references and uh, as you can notice the the first reference is actually by 3gpp uh, some so there are some uh, interesting uh, you know papers and uh, uh, theory about uh, how eicic and the hat nets in lt work so you can download these slides from uh, the 3g4g slide share account and uh, you can actually uh, check out these links So I hope you found uh, this short uh, introduction to the two different definitions of head nets useful. Uh, as always, if there are any comments, uh, just feel free to leave in the comment section. Thank you.